And then the last one I asked was anything else you'd note about yourself? And I was very interested to see people's answers here. You put was actually my favorite answer out of all of them. It's what rose you to the top. Okay, let's get this going. So hi guys, my name is Tony. I am a professional video editor. I have been now for seven years, but I've also been in the YouTube space and really interested in making content for over 11 years. But of course, if you're watching, you might just be more interested as to how I got hired with Thomas Frank. So with that, we're just gonna dive into the interview. So essentially the way this worked was Tom put out an application and at the time I just saw it um, thanks to my friend who shared it with me and I wanted to apply. So we're gonna go through what Tom wrote, how I responded to it, and I also wanna give some more context to what he says that he's looking for and how I feel it's true and how after working together for so long now, how it really does apply to what we do. So let's start it off with the first question, which is basically who and what was Tom looking for when he put out his job application? So okay. I was looking for somebody who could essentially edit at least the level that I had in terms of editing skill, yeah. and then also bring in their own flair, that kind of thing. Um, one other thing, a bit of context that I'll give is I am extremely interested in hiring people who are uh, very independent learners. I want people who are going to be given a problem and go out and figure it out without me having to handhold them. So with the first section there about being an independent learner, not needing to be handheld, I took it more as somebody who is willing to learn and has a genuine curiosity of things because I cannot explain to you guys enough after working with so many creators, because I've worked with many more before I worked with Tom, on how many things I needed to learn and learn pretty much quickly in order to be more experienced and skilled for the job I needed to do. And I think if anything, that can be a big thing I can really recommend you guys is don't shy away from learning. Like a lot of, a lot of things are gonna unfold in production. A lot of things will come up and you have to be willing to go and look and find the answers to questions at hand. Now, don't get me wrong, if you don't want to be that person that's on you, I'm just saying that's going to look a lot better when you apply, if you can be that kind of person for the team when you're getting uh, hired. First thing I asked was link me to your YouTube channel, your Vimeo channel, or a public video archive if you have one. I actually had a lot of people who didn't have a public video archive. Hmm. And I remember thinking, okay, I've given, I think it was like four weeks of time for people to apply for this. So you could go make a video, literally as an application, and that would be my tip to somebody who doesn't have a public video archive. Make a video as an application. You did have a YouTube channel. Yeah. And then I asked to uh, link me to your best example of your editing, which you did. And you're like, I'm an editor for Planet Dolan. Oh, I also asked if there are specific elements or things you'd like to highlight in the answer above, describe them and note their timestamps. So you noted that uh, you had worked on sound design on basically every aspect of this video, which was very interesting to me because I had a lot of people who were only experienced with cutting footage. Mm. Uh, I asked for the second best example of editing. And what I liked that you did is you didn't link me to another Dolan video. You actually linked me to a career day video you edited from your school. And you specifically said, I wanted to share this video because I felt it showcases how our editing styles are similar, but how I can differentiate things as well. So you're showing your range. Hmm. And that was interesting to me because if you only show me one example and it's very different from my style, which the Dolan video was, yeah. it's not gonna necessarily make it easy for me to see like, can you replicate my style and work within my style guide. So giving me two examples was very useful here. And with that being said, that's another big tip. Have more than one example to show somebody, even if it isn't necessarily what they're looking for. So whenever I apply for jobs or if someone comes to me and asks me to work with them, I always immediately ask them or I try to show them as many examples of what they're looking for because I want to show them that just because you're looking for this doesn't mean all I know is this. I know a lot of different ways to make product or to make videos to edit or things that I like and the beauty of that is the more you can show your range and what you can do the more that person can see you as somebody who they can be creative with which I will touch on a little bit more later in this video so think of it like that if you can demonstrate more than one thing that you have made before it's gonna look a lot better when you do apply so the next few questions are what I call brown m m questions Okay, and then where's that from? These are called brown m m questions. I didn't make this up. Uh, I believe it was Van Halen. Could be wrong on the band, but uh, I believe it was Van Halen required roadies to put only brown m ms in his trailer. And the reason for this was not that he was a diva, 
It's that he wanted people who could be detail oriented and follow instructions to the letter because the people he's hiring as roadies are going to be rigging up pyrotechnics, rigging up expensive and heavy lights above people's heads. Like uh -huh. there's all this very detail oriented work that goes into a tour that could, if done wrong, result in people getting hurt. Right. So if you can get the brown m and thing right, then you can probably rig up the lighting correctly is the thought. What I basically did is I asked three different technical questions and I didn't necessarily care if you had to Google them. What I cared about was that you could go and figure out and uh, you know eloquently explain the answer. So these are just briefly describe what an easing curve is, uh, mm -hmm. describe how you'd move a, gra a graphic across the screen in a video, and how would you center the anchor point of a layer in After Effects. I actually got people who wrote, I don't know. Really? Yeah, and they were immediately disqualified. Didn't even look at their channels. If That was the first thing I looked at. If you wrote, I don't know, I'm not looking at your application. Now, before some of you may even see this as a, this is unfair, you know, just because I didn't answer this one thing, it, it seems wrong, right? But you have to understand, this also goes back to being an independent learner. And I kind of remember, it's a little bit foggy because I applied like three or four years ago when I did this, but I kind of remember not even fully knowing myself how to describe something, so I even Googled it. And it's exactly what Tom is basically saying. Just because you don't know the answer to something doesn't mean you should just give it up the way some people did. Some people put, they don't know. And instead, pretend like you did. Go and search it up. The more you are actively looking to learn, such as we have touched on before, the more valuable you can be to someone else. So if you're not willing to look up how to center like an anchor point, that doesn't make it seem like we can be creative with you if you don't wanna be there to learn. And then the last one I asked was anything else you'd note about yourself? And I was very interested to see people's answers here. Okay. Um, I didn't necessarily disqualify people if they didn't put something here, but I really wanted to see something here. Yeah. And what you put was actually my favorite answer out of all of them. It's what rose you to the top. You said, I'm very dedicated to video after editing and improving my craft. Yep. Um, and to paraphrase here, you said, I hope I will be given the chance to not only showcase my abilities and creativity, but also be given the chance to learn more software so I can be the best editor I can be. No one has to ask me to learn something. If I see it's needed, then I will learn it. I was looking for that specifically. Again, I want solution finders and I want people who are interested in improving and honing their craft so we can all come together and make something that's better than the last time. And that right there is why I got hired. I actually didn't even know that that was the reason I got hired. I remember writing that to some extent because I know back then I, I really was just so eager to learn more. And I think Tom saw that. I think he saw that in me when we spoke. And I think throughout the years of us working together, he saw that, you know, when it comes to doing stuff like this, this isn't like just a hobby for mine, even though it is a hobby. It's something I wanna do till I retire. You know, I have a lot of editing goals, a lot of things I wanna accomplish in my life, but it's all through the love I have for production and video editing. So that is why I got hired. If you guys came for the video, that's the answer. But I wanna share really quick another thing that he said, which was he wants somebody that he can be creative with and make something better than what was made before. And I, I like to think that after the four or almost four years, we're like at three years now that Tom and I have worked together, we have made things that Tom would not have been able to do by himself. And it came at the cost of me getting to learn a lot more alongside him because anything he learned, I learned. And I think the skills that we've learned show in the videos. One of the best received videos we've still made is the skill you're slowly losing. And without a doubt, that was probably like one of the best videos we did because not only was it so fun to experiment, but we shot on location. We woke up at like five in the morning or 5.30 to get to this location early in the morning so we can have some good lighting on how we wanted things to look. We got to mess around with videography, cinematography, the editing was so good in my opinion. Like I just think everything in that video showed what him and I can do when we really want to try something new and you guys did receive it well. So if you're wondering what you should do to get hired, how you can stand out, how you yourself can be chosen amongst the many. I think a lot of what Tom and I touched on in this video is exactly how you should go about it. Now, everyone, everyone's gonna be hiring differently, everyone's looking for different things, but I genuinely think that not only is someone's own curiosity of how things work, but someone willing to be a learner, someone who wants to be kind of a creative partner, who wants to do more than what they're just being hired for, I think that does appeal to a lot of people because you have a drive that some people just don't have.
But all right, thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope there's some knowledge along the way that Tom and I were able to share in our conversation and some of the shots that I showed. Um, overall, I just really wanted this to be beneficial for those who are interested in working with other creators and kind of just how to get hired in general. And now something that I did touch on earlier is about being an independent learner. I myself love to learn and I actually very much enjoy reading, which I do on here on my iPad mini. And one thing I wanted to share with you guys is short form. With short form, you get over 1000 nonfiction books in their summaries. And what you can do here is to basically check out any nonfiction book that you're interested in and get a really quick summary of said book. So for example, let's say you're interested in my absolute favorite book, Creativity Inc. One of my favorite things you can do is by going to the one page summary that they have, which you can finish in 10 minutes or less and get a very good idea of the book's general knowledge and the information that they want to share. But one thing I want to be strict about is that this is not a replacement for reading the actual book. If you only read the short summary of it, you're still not getting the entirety of what the author is meant to share. So please read the book if you are interested. But the reason I personally use this service and love it so much is because when I make my videos or when I have to go and try to get knowledge from a previous book I've read, I literally use short form now as a way to do it and it makes my process a lot easier. So if you guys are interested in checking out Shortform and seeing why I like it so much, you can go to my special URL, shortform.com slash Tony Santos. And then with it, you guys will get 20% off their annual subscription, which if you compare it to actually month to month, it's actually 46% off that you guys get to save. And I think that's pretty good considering Shortform already just costs the equivalent of one book a month, but instead of one book, you get thousands. So please check that out if you guys are interested. But overall guys, I sincerely thank you for watching this video and I do hope you guys learned something. And now if there's anything to say, leave it down in the comment section. But above all guys, stay curious. I hope you guys are pursuing your dreams. You guys are staying creative and I'll just see you guys in the next video.